This is the Chonksy X1 power brick and it's 12 volts and 5 amps. Um, but if you run a print that runs for more than an hour or so, it gets extremely hot. It's almost too hot to touch, so I've never known anything that run that hot before. And I've read a lot about the uh, these supplies giving out, so that's a concern. Of course, if you want a heated bed, that might draw 7, 8, 10 amps. This supply would be completely useless anyway. So I wanted to replace the supply, um, and with not much money, the question is how to do that. And the answer for how to do that is one of these. It's a PC power supply. This is the one I'm going to use. And if you look at the rating plate on this one, we can see, uh, where are we? 12 volts, 18 amps. So that's a lot. The next question for most people is, what are all these wires for? I just want two wires, a 12 volt wire and, and a ground. Well, the answer is that um, this was designed to feed PCs, and of course the wiring harness would send out various supply voltages to various devices, hard disk drives, DVD ROMs, CDs, um, and so on and so forth, and the motherboard. Um, and so lots of wires are powered up, paralleled up. So if you look inside this box, you will see that these wires all go to the same pad, which supplies 12 volts. And out they come. These wires also all go to the same pad and they supply 5 volts. And similarly here and here and some other bits and pieces. And the other wires we don't need to care too much about. They're voltages we don't want. So really the only voltages I want from this supply, the only wires, are I need the green one connected to earth. Because that's what the PC's on button does. The supply won't come on unless green is connected to the ground. And then this is the earth wire. Uh, this is not needed, this brown one. And these uh, yellow wires are the 12 volts. And I can draw up to 18 amps from this. And it's free. This is not live. You shouldn't go in here. You should be cautious because if you poke anything in here, you may um, expose yourself to mains voltages. And in general, if you don't know what you're doing around mains voltages, don't do this kind of thing. Um, and whatever you do, it's your fault, not mine. I'm telling you what I do. I'm not advocating what you should do. Okay, so that's the basic principle. Find the green wire and short it to ground. Um, separate out the yellow wires and the black wires and parallel them together. So here we can see all the, all the, the yellow wires. And I think what I'm going to do is chop them off here. I could take the... Um, the board out and then re-solder big wires underneath but there'd, there'd be mechanical problems with that and, and it's too disruptive so what I'm going to do is cut all of these wires here and solder one output wire so solder them all together and one output wire on them insulate it properly and bring one wire out and the same for the ground I'll do something um, less rigorous with the others. Well, I've been around the houses a bit, so there's the, uh, I think that's 3.3, I think that's 5 volt, or maybe it's the other way around, but that's the um, 12 volt, that's the ground, um, all shrink wrapped in. These are the other various uh, voltages and control signals, which I won't be using for this incantation, incarnation I should say, 
um, and the um, 12 volts and ground are coming out through two cores of a mains high current three core flex and they're going into this plug which goes into the trunk C all held together with shrink wrap tape so very solid solder joints so I'm not too worried about the mechanical aspects of the cable it'll be as strong as a cable that wasn't soldered in terms of the cables anchorage in the power supply that's more of a concern um, I think for the time being I'm just going to leave it um, I'll probably cable tie these two supplies uh, what I'll do yeah I'll cable tie them through this loop here let me do that now so for now then this cable tie around this key means if I tug on this it's going to pull on this very unlikely to pull on this this is fairly stable anyway in terms of um, these wires they're outside the case and they're low voltage anyway and they're covered in tape so I'm not worried about those I'm going to leave these other power supplies inside but I'm going to just put them there um, I'll cable tie them there as well but they're miles away from firstly they're um, insulated with tape secondly they're, they will be physically constrained where they are and I think that'll be good enough in terms of other modifications I've made I haven't interfered with airflow I haven't put anything close to main so I think we're all okay there so I'll reassemble that shortly just before I put the lid on something I always say goodnight to a piece of mains equipment to make sure with a fresh eye I haven't left anything dangerous mains comes in here goes to a switch disappears onto the board there's nothing I'm touching down there uh, this is the signal thing it's going to flop around in here there's it's um, closed off its loop back it's just going to sit still it's, I'm not concerned the orange and the red 3.3 uh, and 5 volts are thoroughly taped and um, cable tied to the side for now the um, earth and 12 volts are cable tied to the side here they come out through a grommeted hole they come along here uh, to the socket for the X1 the other control signals come outside they are taped it's a bit messy not to be recommended but I'm okay with it for now I'm gonna let it go like that um, okay so put the lid on so here's the unit uh, I put some double-sided tape on the bottom but left the, uh, the protective covering on so it's not sticky on the bottom to make it temporary feet um, this is obviously not good long term here's the business end I just want to do a final check not wanting to blow the trunk seat apart turn it on the fans going no, I'm not dead nothing went bang just put the multimeter right up there see what power we're getting out of it on the cables as we've wired them we want it um, positive in the middle no 12.03 12.03 ok and just because I'm um, a very cautious person I'm going to put the trunks and power supply on and measure the voltage coming from it and it should be positive in the middle I think the last time was a bit high, yeah, 12 and a half so but basically the polarity is correct, the voltage is approximately the same so we should be cleared to plug this power supply into the trunk seat, let's do that now well it's plugged in I'll turn it on and we'll see if it does the business it does and let's just see if anything weird happens 
when we uh, put the heater on and start dragging a few amps out of it. So preheat, but let's go home all first. Oh, do come along. And it's doing its business. No apparent cause for concern. And remember that this new power supply can go up to 18 amps, not 5, so we should expect it to be um, asleep at the moment, just doing uh, nothing near its, its um, maximum. So I think probably job done.